A very warm welcome to you, my friends and parishioners, to our Pentecost Sunday's Reflection. The Gospel readings are from John chapter 15, verses 26 to 27, and chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. And the theme is the farewell gift of Jesus to us. We are familiar with the importance of fulfilling a dying person's wishes and will after one departs from this world. We are painfully aware that it can at times cause divisions and disputes among family members as recently seen in some high-profile cases. But more importantly, it is a good time to review our lives and look back with gratitude and be thankful for the gifts and the goodness of life which God has bestowed on us and our families and friends. In the case of Jesus our Lord Himself, as He looked back at His life and His legacy, He gave an account of His mission and stewardship report to His Father. He has kept safe all those whom He has been entrusted with. While under His watch, not one is lost except the one who chose to be lost. He has given us everything He knows and learns from the Father. To top it all, He promised to bestow on us a farewell gift, the gift of the Holy Spirit. He said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, He will be my witness, and you too will be witnesses. John chapter 15, verse 26. His last wish for us is to receive the Advocate, the Counsel and the Champion of our cause to do three things. One, to be his witnesses of the truth. Two, to be united as the body of Christ in the Church. And three, to bear fruits in the transformation of the world. Firstly, we too, we too are called to be his witnesses to the truth of his teaching, his identity as Son of God, and in his suffering, resurrection, and ascension to his Father. This is the basis of our faith in the risen Lord, who is still with us through the Holy Spirit to guide us in our daily lives in following him. The preface prayers of the ascension of the Lord puts it clearly. He has ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but we, his members, might be confident of falling where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Simply put, we not only believe in this truth and in his word, but know also for a fact that we too have been given a share of the eternal life of our risen Lord who sits in glory at the right hand of the Father. Secondly, unity among us in the church. Jesus desires that we must be united and be one in his two-dimensional love as he prayed. May they all be one just as we, Father, you are in me and I in you, so that the world may believe it was you who sent me. John chapter 17, verse 21. Our vertical dimension of love for Jesus and the Holy Spirit is the glue that unites all the faithful members of Christ to God. The document of Second Vatican Council in Lumen Gentium, Light of Nations, echoes this beautifully. The Spirit dwells in the church and in the hearts of the faithful as in the temple. He prays in them and bears witness in them to their adoption as sons and daughters. He leads the church into all truth and gives it unity in communion and in service. Hence, whatever we do in words and deeds must not be a cause of division, but must unite us as a family in the horizontal dimension of our love and unity in the body of Christ. Unity comes from God while division originates from the enemy. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit empowers and sanctifies us to bear fruits to enrich and transform the world. I quote from the same document, Lumen Gentium, number 15. Moreover, the Holy Spirit not only sanctifies and guides God's people by the sacraments in the ministries and enriches it with virtues, He also distributes special graces among the faithful of every state of life, assigning His gifts to each as He chooses. By means of these special gifts, He equips them and makes them eager to, for various activities and responsibilities that befit the church in its renewal or in its increase. 
In short, we are equipped by the Holy Spirit for ministry and service in the church, each with different gifts and talents, but always united in sustaining the body. Indeed, a new revolution is at work in the world, the revolution of the Holy Spirit. This is the work of the Holy Spirit and we are the beneficiaries. With Pentecost, we must now put on a new heart, mind and soul. We must change our lives to live in holiness and joy in the way of our socializing, of working and of responding to the needs of the world. We must now be transformed by a spiritual renewal to share in the life of God, the life of Christ and the life of the Spirit at work in us. Only then would the farewell gift of, Je of Jesus to us be truly received and appreciated. So with that, I invite you to have two questions for personal reflections. First question, how have I experienced the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in my life? Second question, what more can I do to build up unity in the body of Christ? And so with that, I invite you to join me to pray together with Mother Mary for protection. Together, O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of the Roman people and of the whole world, know what we need, and we are sure you will provide so that as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. So thank you for joining me, and I wish you a very happy Feast of Pentecost. God bless all of you.